Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. Hi, I'm Natasha Legero. And I'm her husband. And today I'm not even going to say my own name because I don't deserve to because I am sitting in the presence of greatness because my wife, Natasha Legero, has a brand new television program coming out. It is a show called House Hunters, Comedians on Couches Unfiltered. That is a long title. Well, it was comedians. Show. It was comedians on couches, and we just like make fun of HGTV house hunters. And then you took the filter off. Well, wait, now don't it's get on- it. Don't get too into it, because well, we have your co-host on the show. I'm just explaining to you the, the the title. Okay. So it's on Discovery Plus, which is a new network now, which is Ooh. all the best. It's like a curated channel. It's all the best of HGTV. So our show is helping launch this network. Ooh. So it's unfiltered in the sense that. The comedy can be a little more... A little unfiltered. <laughs> you took the filter out. <laughs> anyway, this season, it's... Wait a minute. Okay, Let's get okay, your co-host we can talk on. To Dan yeah, about I mean, you got your, we got your co-host. A man that looks a lot like me, I'll be honest. I could have married him. You could have married him. and He's a little too... He, you're like a little more on the dark side. Yes, he's the light side he's version He's like the of me. lighter side version. The lighter... The, that's probably why he got the job as co-host. <laughs> Am I jealous of him? No, but I am jealous of both of you because as our listeners will hear, this is like the ultimate, this is probably the best TV job I have heard about in my entire (laughs) two decades in this industry. It is the cushiest, most fun job. Anyway, let's call Dan. Okay, so fine. You guys we'll give you a, we'll, we'll hire you, Mosh. No, <laughs> it's been two seasons and you already haven't. I, I, I'm not expecting a thing. Let's call the co-host of Comedians on Couches Getting coffee with cars. <laughs> no, it's comedians on couches. House hunters unfiltered. No, hold on. Just say it's called comedians on couches. Comedians on couches is own Dan Levy. Hi, da- Dan. <laughs> Dan. Hey. So excited to be here to talk to you about season two of com- House Hunters, Comedians <laughs> on Couches. With un with no filter, unfiltered. Unfi- Look, we said it. I, I mean, the thing about the title is, it's actually it takes longer to say the title than to shoot the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling but Natasha. But saying it wrong. He just called it comedians on couches, unfiltered no. house hunters. <laughs> no wait, no. I was calling it comedians on couches, getting coffee with cars, unfiltered <laughs> house hunters. Yeah. <laughs> It, it's all those things. It really should just be us screaming and, and talking over each other at the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good show, though. I was telling Natasha that um, it is literally the coolest job I have heard of in my entire time in the entertainment industry. <laughs> it's just the cushiest, chillest, funnest. Anyway, now that we've got you both, describe the show so that our listeners will know what it is and be able to watch it. Well, it's kind of based on a Largo show that Dan had an idea of where we just make fun of Zillow listings. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which there wasn't really much to it except for that. <laughs> but we did one with John Mulaney and everyone loved it. And then I, I would be in meetings in L.A. for like other stuff I was trying to sell. And they were like, what about the show you did about, you know, House Hunters? And I was like, oh, that wasn't even my show. I, just- I thought they would say, what about that show, House Hunters, Comedians on Couches Unfiltered? <laughs> what about that show, Comedians Under Couches, Drinking Coffee unfil- with Unfiltered Coffee? Drinking Unfiltered Coffee. No, it's, co- <laughs> yeah, it's Comedians Under Couches, Drinking Unfiltered Coffee, Looking at the Ankles of Celebrities. Well, the the point is, Dan and I were kind of like sending each other these house listings and making fun of it. And then, you know, we like to watch House Hunters and make fun of it. So then Dan had this idea, like, what if we just invite our comedian friends? Sorry, you haven't been asked yet, Mosh. <laughs> I wouldn't put the yet there. I wouldn't put the yet there. I'm in, at this point like, not expecting an invite, I'll be honest. You know, what? What what is really fucked up, Dan, is that um, speaking of unfiltered, Natasha told me the reason that I haven't been asked. And she said that you said that I didn't make the cut comedically. <laughs> yeah, no. Here, I'll, I'll be honest. I I watched like all of your specials and I was like, I just don't think he's ready for comedian. <laughs> 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 <It was> unfiltered. <laughs> but it's so fun. 
It is. A, it is. Hey, such a you fun know, if if Ali Wong wasn't available, or Seth Rogen, <laughs> or John Mulaney, you know, maybe we could have, or this JB is, Smoove, or there's uh, just HGTV. Look, HGTV just the, it was in our contract, Natasha. You know, it's like there could only be one Jew with glasses wearing a denim jacket. <laughs> <laughs> it would be it would be mildly confusing to have both of us on a on a, it, not a panel show because at least on a panel you can look at the bodies and go, <laughs> oh, that's that guy's body, that's that guy's body. <laughs> But on a Zoom show and it's a floating head, you're going to be like, this feels just like vaguely anti-Semitic propaganda. <laughs> yes, which is everything we ever do. <laughs> That's right. Well, how are you, Dan? What's good? I mean, I'm, you know, hanging hanging on by a thread over here. <laughs> um, it's it's been uh, it's been nine months, as you guys know, locked down with the with kids and Zoom school. And uh, it's been a lot. But we are now we're we're being positive, even though we have had a few breakdowns this week. Uh, we are being positive, looking forward to the future. No, I, <laughs> I think that. Well, wait, do you want to talk about your breakdown? Well, oh, I have a question because this is a relationship podcast, and I know your wife, Rachel. Mm-hmm. She's very cool. Um, do you feel like? Do you feel like you kind of have to be fielding the breakdowns, or do you guys take turns? Like, like because Moshe's kind of right now. This is the second day of him being in a bad mood, mm-hmm. and like I was, I kind of was having a really rough three days before that. Like, do you guys kind of switch off? <laughs> yeah, we we switch off. Rachel has been, you know, she she's had a few more breakdowns than me because she needs everything to be organized. You know, like especially like the rooms and just sort of keeping everything put together. Um, Me too. I wouldn't say it's OCD, but it's like very close to it, you know? <laughs> but the, the other day, Moshe it's, it's was OCB. like... <laughs> it's OCB. <laughs> it's, it's, it's OCD, but it's not, we're not quite there yet. Yeah, not yet. Well, the other day, just really quickly, because I totally hardcore relate to that, and I'm so glad you're saying that in front of Moshe because I think he thinks I'm psychotic. But remember, you were like, why are you cleaning in the dark? Oh, this was like, funny. Like, I just I was can't in, stop I was picking in, things up. I was, in, I was in our kid's room reading her, a, uh, telling her a bedtime story with the lights out. So we, our ritual is like two books, lights go out. Then I tell like a, 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 a kind of UCB 101 <laughs> story. You know, she throws out a word and I tell her a story based on it and then a song and then bed. So we were in the, we were in the improv story thing and I look over and Natasha, who's in there with us, is crawling around on the floor with like a basket, throwing toys into the basket. Like, and I was like, why are you cleaning right He's now? He's just like, you can't chill. But I, I like Rachel, I needed to be organized. Yeah. And, and the problem is now with like them having like the classroom in their bedrooms, there's just like pencil shavings on the floor and just <laughs> stickers everywhere. And it's such a nightmare that they actually did an impression of Rachel the other night. We were like, do an impression of us. And, both my kids went, if you don't clean up your room, I'm going to throw everything away forever. That's mommy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys go on this? Are you on the Zoom sometimes? Do you have to like be in the Zoom? Well, with he's in second grade, so he's a little bit more organized. You know, like he could sort of follow the he has and his teacher's great. So he's able to kind of like stay on the Zoom and know what to do. And, you know, he could read and all that stuff. But, you know. Romy's in kindergarten. So like kindergarten right. on Zoom is just not ideal. And also Chaos. we have to be responsible for all the papers and everything. And if you think about like all the shit you do in the kindergarten class, like with glue and glitter and like just the, the popsicle sticks, all of that is right. in our house. So it oh. is, <laughs> it's a oh, nightmare. So and the teacher, like they can't do that to herself, right? Like someone has to always be with her. No, and you're not supposed to oversee a kindergarten classroom ever. So I'm sometimes I'm just on, <laughs> on her bed watching it, and she'll be like, "Grab, grab, um, grab the brown bag, and now take out the two rocks." And Romy's like, "There's no rocks," and I'm like, "Excuse me, there's no rocks." And she's like, "Okay, well we sent the rocks," and I'm like, "There's no fucking rocks," and it's just like and she's like, "We sent the fucking rocks," <laughs> and the teacher will mute you if you if you ask questions. It's oh, nightmare. that is so funny. <laughs> that is so hilarious. Like what? annoying do. Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> there's always there's always dads who are confused on the Zoom who are always like, excuse me, uh, <laughs> excuse me. I don't think we got that printout. And she's like, we definitely send out the printout. <laughs> <laughs> are there like a mix of dads, nannies, moms, or what's the vibe? Yeah, yeah. There's a mix of, uh, of all, all, all of the above. But, you know, you don't really. And there's a few kids that are at like a a space which is like no one's paying attention to them so there's a few kids who are just like running around in the background on nintendo switch 
So it's not great for teachers. I feel bad. We were laughing that, uh, you know, because of Zoom school, it's very difficult to bully your children, uh, your 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 stu- co-students, because they're w- wearing like shitty clothes. You know, when we were kids, like if you didn't have nice clothes, you'd get made fun of. Yeah. So it's difficult in the Zoom because it's all face. But now if the parent is there, you could be like, you go, you go, ew, is that your parent in the Zoom? You couldn't afford it. A- you couldn't afford a nanny to watch you in the Zoom. Like that's how you're able to gauge people's economic strata. Like <laughs> Just, he doesn't. He can't even a fucking afford a fucking nanny to watch him in the Zoom. <laughs> what horrible wallpaper is that? Yeah, right. Lillian? <laughs> it's really sad though because I don't know. I mean, I remember at the start of the quarantine, my kid is not quite in kindergarten; she's two. But like, she had this awesome music class with this teacher who would always bring a different instrument, and all the kids would play it. And then they tried to do it from Zoom. And, you know, it was just like she didn't even know where she was looking. She would start crying. She doesn't you know what I mean? It's like such a different experience. The whole thing is so sad for the kids. I mean, yesterday, I'm not even kidding. My kids were playing test center where they were pretending to get tested for COVID. And hips and a plastic bag of water. It oh, was so no. fun. That's what the teacher was leading them doing? No, they did this for fun. This was their like after school fun activity. <laughs> oh, no. You, you know, we used to play like cowboys and Indians and that's super uncool now and you would never do such a thing. But now we've got new factions of people. It could be COVID truther and, <laughs> and COVID realist. Well, I was really trying to get my kid to not hear the words COVID or anything. It's over though now. She says, what did she say the other she day? Said, when-, when the virus is over, can I go visit Wolfie? <laughs> oh my God. I know that they say that every day because both their birthdays, well, no, her birthday was in January, but his birthday, we always go to Disneyland and we couldn't go obviously this year. So all they ever say is when coronavirus is over, can we go to Disneyland? When coronavirus <laughs> is over, can we go to Legoland? When coronavirus is over, can we have fun? <laughs> That's how I honestly, I relate more to them than to you guys right now. I'm like, I want to go. When coronavirus is over, can we go to Mexico? When coronavirus is over, can we go back to Hawaii? I just want to um, have like giant parties. I just want to be hugging people, going to every festival possible. I know. Live, just going to the improv. Think about how cool that sounds. Going to an improv and doing a set I on like know. a Wednesday night in front of 10 people. Doesn't that sound cool? Just seeing anyone would be I so know. great. Do you think people are going to start hugging and crying? Yeah, probably. Well, it's going to be so staggered. Like, my sister is getting the vaccine next week, but I'm probably not going to get it till September 2021. Right. Well, we Dan and I got it already at synagogue. <laughs> yeah. We- first, night of, first night of Hanukkah. Yeah, it was part of the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was just... It was uh, in the middle, basically in in the middle of the menorah. If you turn it upside down, there's a small shot <laughs> exactly. hidden in there, and it's you just gulp it down, and you're you're totally good. Nice. The shamash is actually the vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> it is the helper candle. It after is after all. Um, Dan, uh, uh, did Natasha? we explain our show well enough yeah, for you well, to was, roast I, it? I, he's I was, just mad because he's not on it. What do you mean mad? I'm here. I'm pre- I'm pretending that I'm like Graham Norton right now. So this show, you guys. <laughs> Um, but to clarify again, it's the two of you and a comedian friend, somebody very close to you, you know, somebody very close to you, but not too close to you, um, watching episodes of House Hunters and just roasting the ship out of the houses and out of the people. It's so fun and so funny. And I am very jealous. I didn't think of it myself. <laughs> yes. Um, and it debuts when? January 4th on Discovery Plus. Everything's a plus. <laughs> comedians unfiltered on couches getting discovered plus well also it's funny that we all got rid of cable and now we all have to subscribe to like 45 different situations but i know we 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 if had you can figure out how to get discovery plus i recommend it yeah you got to get it so now you have discovery plus disney plus everything else plus i don't know the cw app whatever you need I mean, what's going to eventually happen is that Peacock all of, Plus. all the apps are going to be are going to uh, wrap together and then offer you a um, app package, and you're going to be like, "Oh <laughs> yeah, oh cable. great, that's a great idea. I'll get all the apps." And then you'll be like, "Wait, I have cable again. What happened?" <laughs> but it's more expensive and way more complicated. Right. There's this new amazing uh, streaming company that has bundled everything together. They're called Cablevision, and they are going to get you all <laughs> of your streaming services. And then Netflix is going to come out. Do you hear about this? Netflix has this really interesting idea of opening up retail centers in every town in America where instead of streaming this content, you go in and you actually will borrow it from the store. Take it home. (laughs) Watch it at home. 
and uh, it's gonna and be then, a lot of fun. And Hulu is gonna come to your house and give you this thing called the Hulu box, and it's gonna sit above <laughs> your TV. <laughs> and we've come full circle. I, I I wish. God, those were simpler times. But then you just need four, like forty-five passwords, and then you're set. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Oh, to yeah. go. you you still need to use your password when you walk. Different in. passwords for all of them. <laughs> um. Okay. Dan. Yes. You're a married man. I am. You're a parent. You know everything. Dan seems very happily married to me. Yeah. I guess are you or are you not? Married? Let's grab your wife. What'd you say? <laughs> are you happily married? Should we grab your wife? Yeah, yeah. She, she's, uh, I'm happily married. Rachel, <laughs> come over here real quick. <laughs> <laughs> she's not, now she's not happily married. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> we, so we just asked Dan if he was happily married, and he hesitated for five full no, months. No, that's time. not true. I'm, I'm and I was just married. wondering. I was just wondering. No, I was. <laughs> I did. was commenting that you guys are happily married. We we yeah. definitely are happily married. We're so happy. We're very happy. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty sweet. This is, the first time this we've is pretty but cute. You know what, Dan? <laughs> Rachel, Rachel, you know what Dan has though that I admire is he has like a real positive spirit. He does, and I think that's really good. Yeah, we were describing, uh, I was saying to Natasha before you came on, Dan, that like we were, she was, we, I was talking shit to her about not having me on the show. And I was like, the truth is they don't want both of us. Not only do we look alike, but you know, she said, well, yeah, you're like kind of like the dark version of Dan. <laughs> it's like dark side <laughs> and light side. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I've always been pretty, pretty positive, I guess, about, yeah. you know, optimistic in general, excited. About. Rachel, sorry to put you on the spot. Yeah, Rachel, you don't have to stay. We, <laughs> we miss you, though. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're happy no, to be married. We're, okay, good. We're so glad to hear it. <laughs> What'd she say? I didn't hear it. She said she's going to go drink some wine, which is oh, really the, the, secret. the pandemic activity. <laughs> um, Every day she does say, like, you know what, tonight, I'm just, I'm not going to drink tonight. I'm just going to just gonna have some tea. I'm just going to take a bath. And then around, like, 11 o'clock, she's like, I got to fucking clean everything. I'm drinking wine. She's, like, chugging bottles of wine. Natasha does the same thing. Yeah. Well, I start around six, yeah, and I'm pretty much done by nine. That's oh, I have a question for Dan. Yes. yes. Do you bring Rachel coffee in bed? I don't, but I make coffee every morning. Ah, oh, fuck! Wait, See, you... I at least could have told you you have to make the coffee. Is, she has this whole thing about how she missed the window to train me. <laughs> because I... I <laughs> Because I was like, it was my first relationship was with her and I was older. Like she could have fooled me into going like, oh yeah, the men make the coffee in relationships. Like that. But that's he thing. does naturally. I know. I know. It's true. Whatever. Yeah. What can you do? Well, I wake up earlier. That's the other thing too. But, but. Oh, boom. See? But he, that means he, and when anyone with kids says I wake up earlier, it's not out of choice. It's because they have a kid. Right, Dan? No, but I will say we're, we're at this new stage since our kids are f five, almost six and seven that they wake up now and they just do their own thing. So the pandemic has completely like changed our lifestyle because normally they have to wow. go to school early, but now school, Zoom schools start till nine. So we've actually gotten this new point where we could, we, I wake up around like seven ish and they wake up like six. So, but wait, they don't call for you? No, no, no. They, oh, they that play. That's amazing. That sounds so cool. Do you let them watch TV? Like, do they know how to turn on the TV? They do, but we stopped television like for, during the week just because it was getting too insane. We, we had to, pull it back so now we just do then we just do like the uh, tv on the weekends but that's they're cool so what do they do in the morning not on the weekends not just not in the morning sorry that's what it is right no but but what do they do in the morning they wake up and like make breakfast for themselves no no they don't, they don't <laughs> eat at all they just like she'll like make presents and cards for people she's never met she only knows through zoom and, and <laughs> And That's so sad. <laughs> so sad. And he'll like play with his like Lego Mario's and like you know just do do homework. That's very, this is all very sweet. Wow, it sounds like you have like really well adjusted. I kids. know you do. You, it is funny how laissez faire you're being about it. It sounds like you guys have like really good kids actually, and you're like really good parents. Well, we had a little issue this week where um he, we found out that uh he he he's like asked Bar Rachel to borrow her phone so we could like look up a Lego thing. And then we found out he basically was going into his Nintendo Switch where we like could control it. And he was like unlocking the Switch and, no. and playing it. And I caught him. <laughs> oh I, I caught him playing Nintendo Switch in Zoom school. And I was like, dude. And he was like, what? What do you see? What do you see? And I was like, I see you playing Nintendo. So, so how, how do you handle that? Do you punish him? 
Well, we're trying to, <laughs> we don't even know, honestly. But because yeah, he, we, he kind of like hit. snuck into your stuff. Well, that's yeah, the, that's hacked. I would use the word. I would use the word <laughs> hacked. <a> tiny yeah. <laughs> hacker. <laughs> well, that's what's crazy. This is probably the first time in history where children are able to be more intelligent than their parents around a very important widget of life and society. Yeah, like your kid is what in second grade. Yeah, and he's a little bit ahead of you in terms of tech. By the time he's in. Eighth, ninth, tenth grade, it's over. Like he won't even know what he's doing anymore. He'll be downloaded to the mainframe. Oh, even on <laughs> even on Zoom, I mean their homework, it's like they're they they upload everything and all the Zoom. He knows how he knows he knows Zoom in and out. And I'm just like, send me the link again. Um, but yeah, he changed he changed Rachel's background, anyways. To Animal Crossing. So Rachel had to have like a meeting with Animal Crossing in the background. <laughs> That is so crazy that he hacked into your computer and unlocked his his permissions. Yes. So I, yeah, I would be really I yeah. frustrated. I wouldn't know how to handle that. Yeah, we Just were be, we were very upset. So he can't use it for you, two weeks now. So you know what you do? You oh, draw. What you should do is you should draw, get a t a little two by four, mm -hmm. cut it down, and draw hand draw a switch onto it. And every time he fucks up, he has to you give him the, the the log instead of the switch and he has to remember what it was like to play switch oh that is that's good that's some good that's a good idea i like that wait i have a question how do you decide on two weeks because moshe is always trying to get me to discipline more we have a two and a half year old but my thing is like if you don't start setting boundaries even now by the time a kid is six seven eight they already they've already figured out how to trample you. It's it doesn't start when they when it gets when the consequences get more serious. It starts when they're young. Do you think that's true? Yeah, I, th I think that is right. I mean, it's 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 just so hard though, especially right now. We also feel right. bad because we feel like Nintendo Switch is like his favorite thing to do, and he is on Zoom all day, and it's like what what is he gonna do? He figured this out. It's still wrong, obviously, but it's just hard. Yeah, what are you going to do? Take away? He's like, I do have an escape into a fantasy world uh, <laughs> device that I can carry around with me at all times. Like, no, nah, we're not doing that. Oh, so sad. I know. Um, I think he learned his well, lesson. He was very upset. You guys are great parents, and the two of you are great together. And I recommend everybody watch the show, Comedians on Couches, unfiltered on Discovery Plus, starting on January the fourth. 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 Um, but Dan. Yes. W w Natasha. Yeah. Now, now I feel like you're my guest now because I feel like I feel like I'm the host. What do you want from us? Let's do some calls. Oh, yeah. So we're going to maybe people we're going to call a person. They have some uh, questions and we can give them some advice or you can just make fun of them. Yes, let's do that. We're going to call Caleb in Champlain. It's not Minnesota. called Champlain. Well, what is it? Well, how would you pronounce that? Champlain? Champlain? Ch Minnesota. Yeah, it's Champlain. No, it's Cha Champlain. 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 Champlain? Wait, show Dan, show, show Dan how you spell it. How would you say this? Will you do the intro for us, Dan? Yes. Okay, we are here talking to Caleb from Champlin Min. <laughs> Very good. Very good, Dan. I see how you got this gig. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was, you know what it was? Dan's Dan. my favorite co-host. <laughs> you know what it was, Dan? It felt unfiltered. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean that... If, Look, I don't Didn't care. It? I don't care. Yeah. I'm a filtered guy everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here comes Caleb. Okay, we're going to see him too. Oh, great. Hey, guys. Hi, Can you Caleb. hear me? How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, good. Look how cute you are. A little handsome Caleb. Oh, right back at you. <laughs> hey, thanks. <laughs> is this, um, it's... Wait, is this Bo Burnham? <laughs> <laughs> You're reminding me of my entire high school career every day with that question. Caleb, uh, it's me, Natasha, Moshe, and our friend Dan Levy. Hi. Good to see you guys. Dan Levy, not the one from Schitt's Creek. Yes. But no, the no. one from Comedians on Couches Unfiltered on <laughs> yes. Discovery+. Plus. You know, Caleb, <laughs> Natasha and Dan are co-hosting a show on, on HGTV slash Discovery+. Plus. We want you to watch it. But also we want to know, how do you pronounce the town you live in champlin yes you guys were right yeah what were you Champlain. saying 
Champlain. I was saying Champlain. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> oh, don't give us that extra. We aren't that fancy. <laughs> that little bougie. Don't eh? throw that extra vowel in there. <laughs> we know, it's not ours. Is it very cold in Champlain right now? It's winter here. What yeah. time of the yeah. year is it over there? Well, it's winter here too. We live at seventy-three, ah, honey. Yeah, we live in the same <laughs> hemisphere, but in a different reality. <laughs> um, Caleb, so how can we help you? Uh, we're all happily married, and you know we'd love to uh, hear what's going on. Well, uh, my wife and I are having a child in four days. Whoa! Whoa! Well, well that's that's the due date. We don't awesome. know. Con- congratulations! But thank you. The only hang-up. Is Caleb Dan we, said Mazel, and that's how that's how Jews, and we are Jews. Yeah, uh, that's how we say congratulations. I just want you to know. Thank you, Mazel Tov. Yeah, yes. close, close. Not that's like uh, that made that made Dan and Moshe uncomfortable. Well, that, I thought you were supposed sh- to do the long O. No, that that made that was the Champlain of you. <laughs> oh, to say Jewish some stuff. Jewish person made fun of me back in the day. Then, oh, all right, this. Why well, you're um, not doing the vaccination? <laughs> what did you say? Wait, he, this is why you're not going to get the vaccination. <laughs> <laughs> so rude. <laughs> anyway, so the only hang up is that we are completely unprepared. Uh, I haven't even held a newborn since Bernie Mac died. So I know you all have kids. <laughs> hold on, wait, hold on. wait, wait, wait. Wait, talk, talk us through that. Oh, not because of Bernie Mac. That's just a good, <laughs> like, a good checkpoint in my life to a uh, yardstick by which to measure time. Like, we all remember where we were when Bernie Mac died. And you That's were holding probably a the board. last time, literally, that I held a baby. <laughs> wow. Who's, wow. Whose baby did you hold when you heard that Bernie Mac died? It was set with the entertainer's baby. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, you were the uh, the stage hand for the comedian comedians of um, what is it? What <laughs> what was their tour? Yeah, called? Kings of Comedy, unfiltered. Kings of Comedy. <laughs> okay, so you haven't held a baby in a long time. Okay, correct. So all three of you, I know, are parents. I'm looking for is any advice to make us feel a little more in control, like we know what we're doing. Like, is there any advice? that you wish you were given? Like, are there any fuck ups you made as a parent? And it's like, oh, I wish somebody told me this. Like, hmm. oh, apparently well, you I can't remember. leave babies in cars. I, not that, I know that, no, but Babies in like cars that. unfiltered. I, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do, this really did happen to Natasha and I. We were having a terrible time for the first couple of months. Um, the kid was just not, happy during the day or i don't remember how we figured it out maybe she was screaming during the day so anyway a parent goes no our friend kristen madrigal friend kristen madrigal babysat and she goes you know that babies are supposed to take naps during the day right (laughs) and we were like oh yeah and like we just been keeping the kid up the whole the whole day my friend Kristen babysat from like nine to 12 and I came home and she had like, Kristen had like reorganized my cabinets and she, the baby was just sleeping in the kitchen since I'd been gone. And I was like, what is she doing sleeping? And she's like, <laughs> oh, they're supposed to sleep in the middle of the day. And I was like, but her naps at like two. And she's like, she needs like two naps before that. Oh. And we just didn't know. Yeah. Because we, oh. at the... At the hospital I went to, they were very focused on breastfeeding. And so I had like a breastfeeding chart and a time and like this boob, then this boob, then this time, then this time. And they were so obsessed with feeding. And every 20 minutes you're feeding. No one told me the the nap schedule. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So how often do babies sleep? A lot. I don't know. You have to ask the nurses. Gotcha. <laughs> what about us? We're the, we're the, I don't remember we're the exactly. Yeah. No. Dan, what do you got? Yeah, let's go around the horn. What do you got, Dan? <laughs> my, my, my son like never, never slept. He was always up. It was like not great. And it was that, that thing you hear where we just didn't sleep for like days and days and days and weeks. And he was always up with his eyes just like, and that's how I started watching basketball because I just like sat in front of like every single basketball, every single playoff game one day because he was just like up all the time. I didn't know what to do. And then, but then our daughter came and she was slept for basically four months she just barely ever never woke. that's what i was like and that's what they said they said that they they need to sleep like when they cry they, they're tired you know so that's what we kind of realized um we you have to just like let them sleep and not you know not get scared if they're sleeping but, 
Dan, is there any other major or like anything else big that, that you wish that you would have known or anything that that you can think of? Um, what'd you say? Oh, <laughs> that none of it really matters because <laughs> <laughs> everything you're doing is Love right. It. Because like you definitely you will love this baby no matter what. And you you get so obsessed with like trying to like do the things that like the app says or you know, a lot a lot of people give you information. That's the one thing I'd say is like don't listen to everyone, you know, because people don't even remember what they were like when they had newborns. Like it's it's you're just like walking sure. through the cloud, you know. So anyone who well, gives sort of like newborn advice, they they don't really remember what they're even talking about. They just love to talk, you know. <laughs> That's what I was going to say is it I was going to say the same thing. It doesn't help to have your friends or your parents, your friends who had kids 10 years ago or five years ago or your parents who had kids 30 years ago. Those people can't help you. You need somebody that either has a child, had a child six months ago. That's your your resource because those people remember everything like we're already forgetting what it was like and our kids only two. So have somebody like a little bit ahead of you that's super useful oh um, that's good rachel's mom would like get my wife's mom would like give us advice and then rachel would be like but didn't you just like leave me in the crib and go for long walks in tampa and they're like yeah <laughs> left you with the whole walk. <laughs> it's insane um i have some i have some go-to bits of advice that i give do you have something tosh oh you i was just like gonna say she should get a, a scheduled c-section <laughs> <laughs> Because like everyone always ends up having to get an emergency C-section, yeah. and then, then oh it's yeah, like, just get right ahead of that it's problem. It's dangerous. It's dangerous to the baby. It's dangerous to you, and your scar looks bad. That's funny. So yeah. why not try to schedule it? Um, That's very Natasha. Do you have any parenting advice? Yes, <laughs> S -s surgery. I would say surgery. But I do remember we 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 had a doula, and of course, you know, we had to have an emergency C-section. So I feel like spending all this time with the doula and having several meetings and talking about the way it's going to happen. And then you end up just rushing into the operating room was sort of like, well, thank you for your time, Maya, but we don't need you anymore. You know? Yeah, no, we, <laughs> we scheduled a C-section. We walked in at our appointment was at 10 a.m. And at 10 15, we were parents. It was like 10 09. Yeah. It was like zip, zap, zap. We were in the, in the other room. Like, okay, there we go. That and was, I was actually getting a massage after I had the baby. Cause I had so much swelling and the woman was like, Oh my God, who did your C-section scar? It looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so no, we live in LA. How common are C-sections? Does everyone just get them? No, um, in Brazil, apparently they're so common they had to force people to stop doing scheduled C-sections because nobody was having vaginal birth anymore. People <laughs> just they just opted out. But you look young. Your wife is probably young, so maybe she won't need to have one. I mean, they're not they're not the norm, but they're I think they're more the norm when people are a little older. Recovery isn't that easy. Also, uh, I've heard rumors. Um, okay, here are my go-to bits of advice for new new parents, specifically dads. Moshe loves to give advice. I, no, I just always say the I same things. I hear it. I only have a few. One I would say is uh, is just a product plug. You got to get a snoo. It's this uh, it's this robotic um, uh, bassinet that like shakes your baby. Yeah. You can for you. rent them. You yeah, you can rent them now, and it's cool because you it has an app on your phone that it'll like it'll shake your baby if it starts crying. It'll shake a little faster if it doesn't stop crying, and it'll shake a little bit faster. And then on the fourth thing, it sends you a text message going, "You should actually go parent your child." <laughs> so I recommend <laughs> shake your own baby. Um, the other thing I great advice I got from Alex Blag, a great is get a Bruce toothbrush. Yes, yeah, a brush and a snoo. Sorry, continue. You got a brush and you got a snoo. Um, I, I, as a father, I don't know what you were like, Dan. I'm curious to hear your... I kept thinking that the moment I laid eyes on my child, I was going to have this moment of like, oh, you know, the universe has been rearranged and I feel this connectivity to this child. I know now my mission and my purpose in life. It's like, I thought I was going to have like a Simba moment, you know, where I was like, hey, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't feel that at all. I, my first thought was maybe this was a mistake. <laughs> like I just like, I was so overwhelmed with fear. Let me just say though, Dan is a man who brings his wife coffee in bed. I bet he did not have those. Did feelings. you have the instant like religious experience? It, it wasn't instant but when it, when he came out when he came out and like 
based and it was handed to me like I did just I just started like crying because it was just like this because I was like he looks like me (laughs) (laughs) and then the doctors who who brought him you know what just started making fun of me and was like wipe those crocodile tears and I was like what's going on (laughs) so why are you getting roasted (laughs) I don't know what my reaction is going to be but I know at the beginning of the pregnancy my wife and I talked about it and we both did have a very real fear of what if we don't love this baby? So I know that's practical. I that's think. what I'm saying is like a lot of people have Dan's experience, but Dan's experience is obviously the better experience. That's what you want. You want to have the like, oh my God. But because of that messaging, I thought that was the experience you were supposed to have as a father. And so when I didn't immediately have that feeling, I thought, oh my God, I maybe I'm one of these people that's like not going to love its child. And so, so don't my one bit of advice is don't have that expectation. If you have it, it's amazing. If you don't have it, it doesn't matter. You're going to love the kid. I guarantee more than anything in the world, but it wasn't instantaneous for me. It was much more overwhelmed and shocked for me. So I tell people to prepare for that. Okay. I love to hear that. Natasha, what was your first reaction? Because it's a little different because you knew the kid nine more months than Moshe. Well, you certainly don't know something that's like a parasite growing inside of you. <laughs> You're or, valid. You, know, you can't yeah. talk to it. It's just like this like growing blob. So I didn't know her, but I do remember when it came out, it? I looked up at Moshe and he had his little like thing on, you know, like the shower cap and his yeah. mask and he's his like glasses, but like his eyes looked like terrified. And so I just <laughs> really remember that. <laughs> I remember taking him home from the hospital and that's when I had like a freak out moment. Like I remember that's scary, really like driving so slow back home. And then I took him out and then I put him in, in the house and then he just started crying. And I was like, uh, and it's, this is mine now. This is my problem now. <laughs> and it was, it was very scary, but it, it, it all, it all just, it, it's all fine. You know, it's going to work out for you, Caleb. I have a feeling. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> But it's true, Dan. That feeling is so scary. It's even almost as scary as the moment of the act of the event is the moment when you get home because you're just surrounded by doctors and nurses and orderlies and people taking care of you. And Especially then, with the C-section recovery, we were there for three days. Right, and then you get home seven days later or three days later, and you close the door behind you, and you're like, "Oh, it's just us. Like, it's just us here now, and we're parents." And then I would freak out. Like, I don't know if you guys, I'd like go by the crib and just be like, is he still breathing? Is this oh. normal? All the time. All the time. Didn't you do that, Tosh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, my last bit of advice, Caleb. Oh, he's still Go coming. for it. I got one more. This is, this is the <laughs> he's advice. Like, he's like, when your wife is uh, breastfeeding, go surfing. <laughs> <laughs> that is really good advice, but maybe not in uh, Champlain. I'm not yeah, no surfing kidding. at those those lakes. Okay. Uh, this is from Alex Blagg, my dear friend and a great comedy writer. He told me, I think this is great advice. He goes, your baby for the first three months, or no, six months. How, how, when do babies walk? Was it six months? No. Babies no, like not, a year. Like a year and a half. Nine months? Something. Great. But, but they, uh, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. They start crawling. It. They, start anything. Craw- <laughs> they start crawling at like six months, right? Or nine months or something. When do they crawl? Like six months, maybe. Right. So he said, you're going to have six months where your baby can't even turn over. You can just set it there and it will lie there and it'll fall asleep. And he goes, do not feel parental guilt during that time about watching Netflix or chilling out or checking your email or not and not hyper paying attention to every single second with that baby there because there will come a time when your child is going to flip over, start crawling, start walking, and they will never sit down again for the rest of your life. You will never, ever get that. So that first months, just enjoy the fact. Don't confuse it for neglect and just enjoy it. Yeah. Enjoy the fact that your child is just like there and you don't have to worry. That's great advice because I do feel like you, you those first few months you, re, you you feel like you need to do so much and it's overwhelming, but you really that's the calmest like your your, your parenting's ever going to be because now like my kid will be like, hey, why are you always on your phone? I'm like, hey, shut up! I don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, especially as the father, because the woman, if she's breastfeeding, is like literally keeping the baby alive with her body. Whereas like the dad is just kind of like this doofus who doesn't. Hey, 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 <laughs> well, me, Dan and Caleb really don't appreciate that. We are. We are very cool. <laughs> um, OK, Caleb, well, I think we've given you more than you need. Yeah. Yeah, I really appreciate it. I learned tonight. Well, you're on an adventure. You're about to jump into the adventure of a lifetime. We're all very happy. What are you going to name it? Yeah. Honeymoon. Her name is Demi. Cute. Thanks. I like it. But are you going to have her be like, wasn't Demi more like it's Demi? No, oh, we're yeah. not going to go the Demi route again. Too fancy for us champion. <laughs> I actually thought he was going to name his child Deal Hughley. <laughs> <laughs> You should name her the original king of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Caleb. Bernie good Mac, luck. right? Yes, Bernie Mac indeed. Good luck, honey. It'll Thank be Thank you very much, guys. Good to see you all. Bye. Bye. Congratulations. Mazel tov. Thank you. <laughs> Dan that was helpful what what was your because I, I, I feel like I also want to tell people like it'll get better like whenever someone sends me a picture of their baby I'm like ugh, I do not miss that like those blob days I yeah. kind of like do. it's just like a blob of a thing like I like when they talk and are engaged yeah I, I, I do th I, I feel like yeah that's why it's so people are so overwhelmed in the beginning but it's really it's it's gonna get great you know when yeah. you get to have like little people around and it all works I out. mean I'm still overwhelmed but at least like she says funny things it is crazy that there's no training, isn't there? Shouldn't it be like mandated by the state that when you get pregnant, you have to like learn stuff? I don't know. So many people in the world just don't even read one book and they're just like, well, let's see how we raise a human being. <laughs> <laughs> I remember someone gave me one book like called Dude, You're Being a Dad. I'm like, I'm not going to read this book. <laughs> Dude, you're going to be a dad. <laughs> I read one book that somebody gave me that was poorly named but very helpful called Eat, Sleep, Poop. Ew. I know it's a gross name, but it was basically a pe pediatrician who was also a father. And basically it was just like 100 pages of him saying, don't worry about anything ever. That's why Moshe liked that book. <laughs> but it was like, he was just like, fever, don't worry you know uh, uh, screaming don't worry oh that was what i meant to tell him my other bit of advice is your baby is always if they're upset they're either hungry dirty or tired and that's it you don't have to that's it but you don't think that's like a toddler though no no toddlers are have ennui they have ennui uh, yeah our toddler has ennui do you think she does no she doesn't have ennui right. not yet not until she gets a switch do your kids have like pandemic ennui? Do they ever like, are they sad or depressed about this? Yeah, are we, are they going to be like goth? All these kids? I think that they are actually like doing very well in this specific situation because we're around so much, you know? And I think right. they get so much of our time. So especially mm. like Romy, like she's, she's so happy. I mean, I feel like it's a little bit different for him, obviously with Nintendo Switch situation. It's clearly things aren't so great, but I think they're doing pretty well. So she like loves being around you guys and it's like oh, special yeah. and that's so cool. So happy. And she also, you know, she's never really been in school. So she doesn't know she's in the preschool, but she's never been. This was her first year going to kindergarten. So she doesn't really know even really what she's missing totally where he like, I miss lunch. Oh, she, you know, she's like me before I got into a relationship with Natasha. <laughs> she's trainable. You're like, oh, no, this is what kindergarten is like. Yeah, so everybody do, does kindergarten on a a MacBook. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> on a MacBook. Um, wait, Dan, do you have time for one more call? Yeah, oh, we could get, we give you a choice. Oh, okay. Wait, do you want to do another call? I think we should do a call. Okay, let's do another call. Okay, we're gonna call Robert in Boulder, Colorado. Man, this is Ooh. a dude a dude heavy episode. We yeah, it's 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 a. Uh... I love Boulder. I also love Boulder. You know, I went to Boulder. On uh, opening up for the one and only Aziz Ansari. That's the... really. Do you remember those days? <laughs> I do remember those days. Hey, what's Robert? What's happening? We can't hear you. You're Hold muted, on. Robert. You're muted. He definitely looks like he lives in Boulder, Colorado, <laughs> <laughs> or under a boulder. Could it also be? It's under a boulder. Yeah, there we go. Hey, hey, how are you? I'm Robert. doing great. Good to see you. How is Boulder right now? Uh, pretty white, still white. Yeah, still white after all. Still white. Years. Still celebrating uh, that November third. 
Robert, it's it's me, Natasha, Moshe, and our friend Dan Levy. How's it going? How are you guys doing? Great. You know, I'm just starting the stand on CBS All Access. And you know, they all end up in Boulder. Do you know that? I didn't know that. The, the whole the stand is all centered around Boulder, Colorado. At the end of the world, when a great pandemic hits wait i want to watch that i'm good i stopped it so we could watch it together a great pandemic hits the united states and the world everybody who survives starts walking to boulder robert so you better get the tea on because we are coming your way um okay so how can we help you so um uh so are, are we uh do you have time to talk to us right yeah, now? yeah are we interrupting <laughs> it's been a long day um we're with you yeah so me and my wife, we've been married almost uh, coming up on 10 years. And years ago, we agreed to um, or we agreed to a situation of being able to hook up with other people if the right situation came along um, and just being honest and upfront about it with each other. And she had got into a situation with someone from back in her hometown that lives across the country. And they had met up a few times over the last couple of years, which had been fine. And and <clears throat> totally okay with, but like the last year, I think during the pandemic, I think our marriage has started to suffer. Um, I mean, since March, just going into unhealthy habits and um, starting to like, it just feels like it, <clears throat> over nine years, it never felt like it was falling apart. And now it feels like it is falling apart. And then recently she's went back there, met up with this guy and I said, okay. And I think in my mind, I wanted her to say, no, I don't want to do this right now. I think our marriage is more important. So let me, like, I didn't want to be the one to say no. I wanted her to be the one to say no. And now I'm in a situation of, I don't know how to address her, of coming to it and saying, of being the one to say like, hey, like you should have made the right decision before. Because I feel like it's that, you know, if like you tell a kid to say, they don't say thank you and you, you tell them to say thank you. And then they do. And it's like, well, now it means nothing. And I don't want to be the one to push her away by saying like, hey, you can't do this anymore. And I'm trying to think of how to address it with her. Well, the hard thing about opening up a relationship is which which is why I always deny Moshe a three way is because <laughs> it, it, obviously it's not that simple and it's really complicated. And, you know, I think men have this fantasy that everyone can just get into these purely physical relationships and just kind of get off and it'll all be fine. But like for me, I really would want to like have a crush on someone to like be able to to want to like cheat on my husband. <laughs> you know, like I'd have to really be into somebody. So I don't know. It's like. But he might do it for different reasons. He might do it because he just wants to like have sex with someone new, but he still wants to have all his intimacy with me. So I don't know. It's just so complicated. I, I can't really speak to it with any authority because I've never done it. But I just know that opening yourself up like that, obviously stuff like this is going to happen. Yeah. And I think that's what like, we always felt impermeable to like when people would always say like, how could you do this? How could like not understanding, like how could you allow your wife to sleep with someone else? So and, I think we were just a little naive over nine years and now it feels like, well, shit, was I naive? You know, for nine years, it felt like everything was fine. But now that things are falling apart. How many years has it been open? Uh, probably five. And, but, but did you guys agree to like the sa like hooking up with the same person? Because I feel like that is sort of what seems to be the issue is she seems like she's in a relationship with this other person now, right? That is. Yeah, the issue, because I think the th thing that we said was like, hey, it's just sex, so it's fine. Like, if we just go with those rules of leave it at that, you know, you have sex the next day, we wake up, we're together, we're married, our life goes on. And now I think, I guess I just gave her enough trust to say like, hey, you should have known, like, there's too many emotions involved here. Like, how did you not see this happening? Well, you can't just assume that she knows things like nobody really. It's not fair to just assume that she knows that you're hurting or jealous or, you know, don't you think the first step could be at least totally saying what he's feeling? That's what I strongly feel this whole time listening to you like is that you are fighting the wrong battle mentally is that in your mind, the battle is why did she go 
see this guy when she should have known it without me saying it, she should have known that I had a boundary up. Like that's one of my biggest pet peeves in relationships generally is someone sets an invisible secret boundary. And then when I violate it, they get angry at me for setting a boundary. I never told them existed. And like you, the framing of it is like, how do I tell her that she fucked up? But that to me isn't really the important thing. And also the fact that she went to see this guy isn't really the important thing. Uh, what's important is what is the the part where you say your marriage is falling apart and you want you want it sounds very clear like you want to fight for it. And like now is the time to fight for it. It's not now is not the time to find the right way to point out that she <laughs> fucked up. Now is the time for you to go to just like what Natasha was saying, to go to her and say I wish I had told you I didn't want you to go. I fucked up. I made a mistake. I should have told you I didn't want you to go because I think our marriage is falling apart. And because our marriage feel is so important to me, I don't want it to fall apart. And I want to fight. Like, because open relationships don't work. Well, and at the five-year yeah. mark, that's when it's really clear. <laughs> it's really fun for two and a half years. And everyone really like looked up to us. But now we're at the point where but, everyone's like, oh, yeah, that's what happens. Are you in any sort of relationship with another person? Or is it just her at this point? Well, I think that's the, yeah, I've had relations with a few people. But I think that's where like the disconnect is of like, what Natasha was saying, like, I just look at it as the sex, but like for her, it's, it's not about whether, you know, it's this attract, attracted to the person. It's like attracted to all the emotions of like having that connection of like being a close friend, which I think is where the danger comes into it. Right. Right. And that, go ahead, Dan, do you, did you want to say something? I was just saying open relationship during COVID just seems like totally <laughs> crazy. Just, just on a public health perspective. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> I agree with that. I, mean, I haven't had a friend inside my living room. In <laughs> Much less your asshole. Going to like my hometown and having sex with someone. But mazel <laughs> <laughs> a good, a good point. I, but I, I guess to be fair, I'm pretty sure that guy does nothing but sit home and do nothing and think about your wife. Uh, but no, I think that you, you know, in my biggest takeaway from all of my years in AA, I'm sure I've said this before, is this magical idea that anytime I'm disturbed, that I have to find out the where I fucked up. Anytime I'm resentful, anytime I'm angry, I leave aside the, the, the mistakes that anyone else has made and I find out what I could have done differently. And I think that's your question right now. It's not what whether she is having an emotional affair with this guy. It's not whether she should have gone. It's not whether she should have read your signals and known you didn't want her to go. It's what do you want to tell her? Do you want the relationship to work? Because you are the that's the only thing you have power over you don't have power over whether she's still in it whether she still wants it whether she's going to stick with it you have only power over you yourself telling her saying i want this can we make this work and also i would like to say being gentle on yourself and on her because we're all in the middle of of of, of Ten tensions we've never felt before. I'm not surprised that your marriage is feeling like it's falling apart. Not we just tensions, but also like if anyone wants an escape right now. I mean, it's like <laughs> it, everyone is like, I, I feel it and I've never felt that before, you know, so. Yeah, exactly. And I think that like, that's what I realized, like her going to see him isn't the root of our problems in marriage. Like the root of the problems is everything going on here but like that's and i guess that's where the question was it's like do i even address that because i know that's not the problem like it's a like it's bothering me but really i need to work we need to work on things here at home and fix everything else to address the bigger issue yeah i think your solution is actually very crystal clear and not sim uh, simple but not easy which is that you have to tell her how you've been feeling and ask her if she will see a, a professional with you. You guys need marriage counseling, and that's obvious. Like you need to work through some of this stuff with someone, and and fight for your marriage if that's what you want to do. And and, I, and also maybe think of ways to to bring a little romance back if you can, or connection without yeah. another person. Without yeah. another person, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I think that's it, and I think that's where my frustrations are coming from. When you're both sitting here cooped up in a house, and I feel. You know, like we're just going through that mundane and like you you have to be the bad person or, you know, like you annoy each other. And here's this other guy that gets to just sit across the country and romance you. And, and you know, like 
give you that love. And I'm like, I want to give you that, but it's, it's difficult when you're sitting here every day in the apartment together. I've definitely noticed things about Moshe I've never noticed before. I, right. I didn't know he held his, his fork, how he holds it. Um, <laughs> his sneezing is like it's, it's free sneezing, out of control. Uh, There's more. Oh, you, you he, he's loud. He's, 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 oh, I he, scream. He screams. Me too. Sneezes. All right, brother. <laughs> yeah, <I'm just> <laughs> so loud. And what's so funny, Dan, is that I yell at him and I always make a dirty look when he does it. And he's like, it feels so good. Don't make me feel bad. I love it. It's it's like his his ple- his one pleasure in life. Yeah, yeah like when I sneeze, like my whole body shakes. <laughs> like I- <laughs> it's my Nintendo Switch. It's my way out of this hell. Um, no, but it's 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 hard. I know, and and you know, there's it's it's hard to have to be so heavy about it and say that you need counseling. But you know, it's about where your focus is, and also like what you're saying, Moshe, letting her know what the boundaries are. And well, yeah. Yeah, and putting your foot down, and, and and if she's like, listen, I'm gonna go anyway, and she feels very distant. Well, then, you know, maybe it's something deeper you need to address. But that's great news. I mean, it's not good news, but that's great information. But if what you, if she's just gonna have a fling, and then she's gonna come back to him or something? Well, I'm not saying I don't think you should put. I don't think the time is now for putting your foot down. I think the time is now. You ready for this? Yeah. It's not time to put your foot down. It's time to put your heart open. <laughs> But I'm serious. Like, now's not the time to go, like, no more seeing that guy. What's up with that? Why'd you go over there? I was right here and you knew I was hurting. Why didn't you stick with me? It's all about you getting vulnerable and saying, like, I'm scared. I want this thing to work out. What do we do? And you're 100% right about long distance relationships. Their primary function, because I was a serial long distance relationship person, their primary function is all the intensity of new love with none of the work of actual intimacy. I mean, it's like, that's why they work. If you're an emotionally uh, uh, crippled person like I was for a long time, they're perfect because you can once every three months fly to a far off city, have this fucking crazy intense situation and then go back to your safe space, which is being alone. That was my thing. So I just think like you have to get vulnerable and you have to get real and you have to get like the what's going on with you she, she needs to know that and she might surprise you and say me too i wish i hadn't gone too you just don't know yeah i agree i think i have a, yeah that, i have a big problem opening up and like expressing that i just want to like say yes do this do whatever you want like i want to kind of just appease but i'm not really acknowledging how i'm feeling yeah and the problem isn't that she's sleeping with another guy the problem is that you guys are starting to not want to sleep with each other that that's the issue exactly yeah all right, well, good luck. But well, seriously, get a counselor. Why not? Who gives a shit if it's scary? Actually, you know, we have a sponsor called Talkspace. That's right. It's so easy. You can literally do it in your kitchen in the apartment that you're annoyed with your wife in. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, good luck. We do Thank it you guys. Across the country to see her lover. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Dan. Bye. Bye. This is such a hard time for so many people. It's so hard. And there's a 10 million. Hard for everyone. You know, I feel like it's just, it's really an intense situation. But my my therapist said, like, don't, don't make, don't do extreme things in radical times. You know, and I think like that's really, and I have a lot of friends who are doing that. People are like leaving where I'm done with California. People are like, (laughs) People are just like leaving like their lives or make you breaking up or there's so many things that are happening in these situations. I think what you said to him is so right where everyone just needs to like, it's so hard and easier to say it, but it's just like time to like, you just got to sit in this and just like get to the end and then start to rebuild and figure out where our life should be. It's too hard to figure it out right now. And what you said was so right too. You were like, I think it was you that said everybody's looking for an escape right now. And the problem in, in an open relationship is especially one like that that doesn't seem like it was healthily built it was built on very shaky ground i mean they're already complicated but theirs was built on like a okay i'll wink at you and you go ahead and <laughs> yeah, get your rocks off if you need them like that woman has a built-in escape pod and everybody's wanted to take one of those during this pandemic but like you know we just don't in in a monogamous relationship you don't have that i, I and i'm not trying to say open ones are bad i'm just saying i see why she ran away to this guy because it's like we've all wanted to just like run away to a beach somewhere and be by ourselves, or, you know, or whatever. But I would say I feel like open ones are probably more complicated during this time. Yeah, right? so I, I felt that too. 
it's just there's there's a lot going on and you're trying at least when you're with one person in these situations you're like together in it you know so it's kind of like break that trust to sort of figure out your own thing it's almost not fair to your partner you know unless you're that's your thing totally or unless you're you're ready to get a divorce but yeah, you know, I, yeah. What do you you always say? There's never a a good time to give bad news. Is to do a bad thing, it's like it, right. The bad thing maybe being telling them how you feel or whatever it is. Right, and it's like also it's there's never a bad like it's always getting bad news that you need to know is always better than not knowing. It's That's like true. it's like uh, when you avoid taking an STD test or a cancer test because you're like, I just don't want to know. It's like, that's never good. That's you always so should have the information that you need. So even if that guy's relationship is over, it's better to know what's happening. So you can move forward. Yeah. And it's always HPV. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Dan, it's always... HGTV, now <laughs> Discovery Plus, this season of Comedians on Couches, unfiltered, unfiltered on Discovery Plus, January 4th. We have Ali Wong, Chelsea Peretti, Margaret Cho, JB Smoove, Blake Griffin, John Mulaney, Seth Rogen, Amazing. Dan Levy, me, and maybe Moshe season seven. And maybe I'll get to do Punch Up season seven. <laughs> It's fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dan, thank you so much for doing the show. Thanks for having me. It's so fun. I love you guys. It's so good love seeing you. Too. you. Miss you. Miss you. Okay. Bye. Bye.